Essential question. What lesson does the cowardly lion learn by the end of the story? The Cowardly Lion. Adapted by Dennis Fertig. Illustrated by Steve Adams. A fierce looking lion hid in the dark forest. He could see the yellow brick road that led to the Emerald City. He could see anyone or anything that passed along the road. Yet those who came this way could not see him hidden in the trees. The lion heard voices. The sound interested him, but it frightened him too. He gave out a low roar as a warning. In seconds, he saw the forest visitors. They were quickly looking around to see what had caused the roar. They looked afraid. The lion was glad about that. These visitors looked odd. The lion did not know that they were Dorothy, Toto, the Scarecrow, and the Tin Woodman. He did not know they were going to Emerald City to see the Great Oz. To the lion, these visitors were just a little girl, a floppy man with straw in his shirt, a man dressed in a gray metal suit, and a small creature of some sort. It was the small creature that caught the lion's eye. It looked like a good snack. The lion stood up, roared, and charged toward the group. Before Dorothy and the others could move, the mighty lion knocked over the scarecrow. As the scarecrow fell off the road, his straw stuffing flew all over. Next, the lion quickly used his paw to push the tin woodman. The lion's claws could not scratch the tin. Still, the tin woodman fell to the road. Just then, little Toto charged at the lion. That surprised the mighty beast. He opened his mouth wide in fear. His big teeth gleamed horribly in the forest light. Dorothy rushed toward the lion and grabbed him by the scruff of the neck. Don't you dare bite Toto, she shouted. You should be ashamed of yourself. A large lion like you, picking on a small dog. You are nothing but a big coward. The lion sat on a log. I know, he said, hanging his head in shame. I've always been a coward, but what can I do? I don't know, you cowardly lion, said Dorothy, but you knocked over the scarecrow, a poor stuffed man. Is he stuffed? asked the lion in surprise. He watched Dorothy help the scarecrow back to his feet. She stuffed straw back into his shirt. Of course he's stuffed, said Dorothy. That's why he fell over so easily, said the cowardly lion. Is the other one stuffed too? No, said Dorothy, as she helped the tin woodman up. He's made of tin. That's why he nearly broke my claws, said the lion. What is that little animal you care so much about? He's my dog, Toto, answered Dorothy. Is he stuffed or made of tin? asked the lion. Neither. He's just a dog, said Dorothy. Oh, he seems so small. Now that I look at him, said the cowardly lion, no one would think of biting such a little thing, except a coward like me. Dorothy looked at the great beast with wonder. What made you a coward? she asked. It's a mystery, replied the lion. Maybe I was just born this way. But animals in the forest expect me to be brave. The lion is thought to be the king of beasts. The lion sniffled and added, I learned that if I roar very loudly, every living thing would run to get out of my way. But if elephants, tigers, or bears ever tried to fight me, I would run away myself. I'm such a coward. But that isn't right, said the scarecrow. The king of beasts shouldn't be a coward. I know, 
agreed the lion. He wiped a tear from his eye with the tip of his tail. It makes my life sad and lonely. But whenever there is danger, my heart begins to beat quickly. Perhaps you have a heart illness, said the tin woodman. That may be, said the lion. If you have, you should be glad, said the tin woodman. It proves you have a heart. For my part, I have no heart, so I cannot have a heart illness. Perhaps, said the lion thoughtfully, but if I had no heart, I could not be a coward. Have you brains? asked the scarecrow. I suppose so. I've never looked to see, said the lion. I am going to ask the great Oz to give me some, remarked the scarecrow. My poor head is only stuffed with straw. And I am going to ask him to give me a heart, said the tin woodman. And I am going to ask him to send Toto and me back to Kansas, added Dorothy. Do you think the great Oz could give me courage? asked the cowardly lion. Just as easily as he could give me brains, said the scarecrow, or give me a heart, said the tin woodman, or send me back to Kansas, said Dorothy. Then, if you don't mind, I'll go with you, said the lion. My life is too hard without any courage. You're welcome to join us, answered Dorothy. You will help keep away other wild beasts. They will be more afraid of you than you are of them. So the group set off again on their journey to the Emerald City to see the Great Oz. The lion walked proudly at Dorothy's side. At first, Toto did not like this. How could he? The poor dog had nearly been crushed between the lion's great jaws. But after a time, Toto became more at ease. He and the cowardly lion grew to be friends. On the road, the lion could tell that his new friends were not afraid of him. He was glad. He knew how bad it felt to be afraid. 